Hey YouTube, this is uh, King Cobra JFS in the video. I uh, walked down to the nearest convenience store and picked up another pack of uh, some Camel Fulterless cigarettes and bought a um, energy drink. There's about um, that much left. I drank all that on the walk home because I was thirsty. And, yeah. This is a, a Rockstar Super Sour energy drink. It, it's the, um, I don't know, it's just this weird new flavor they got going. Super Sours. Um, uh, it's, it's called Bubbleberry. It's the Bubbleberry flavor. I thought that sounds kind of good. They didn't have um, zero carb Rockstar, but I figured, you know, why not try something new? See how my body cracked it open to all the tastes of the battle. And uh, the taste isn't half bad, but it's not really that good. Um, you know, when you want those um, sour suckers with gum in the middle, and you, you know what, you get to the gum in the middle of that sucker, and then you should turn on that gum, and the gum's at the peak of its flavor, or it's supposed to lose it. It's just like that weird, weird taste that you get when you, when you chew on that gum. That weird taste is what this tastes like. So, um, not the best rock star I've had, but I will say it's not half bad. It's not half good either, so I don't know, um, what they're trying to do with this here, but, uh, uh I don't know, this is me personally saying what I think about it. Um, you might on the other hand might like it, so if you're into the rock star and all that, you know, give it a try and see what you think. I figured it's energy drinks, so there's no point in wasting it. Yeah, but that taste is funky as all hell. You know, I say this is the first time I've had an energy drink that I didn't really wasn't too overly enthusiastic about. <laughs> so, I don't know, Rockstar, what they're trying to do with this one. I sure got a fucking monster. They had the Rockstar Recoveries. They're the, the purple ones. The ones for, like, um, grape Kool-Aid, basically, and without the carbonation, those are actually really good, too. driving outside make a whole bunch of ruckus for the loud engine which normally wouldn't be a problem for me but it's like 4 3 3 in the morning and I imagine there are people trying to sleep so that's why I'm trying to keep it quiet here but yeah this is Rockstar Super Sours Bubble Berry here you drink and um uh it's it's weird taste it's it's like you know it's it's it's, it's kind of how I described it, you know, that's what I said, yeah. And, uh, like I said, I'm not too crazy about the flavor. I think it's weird. I don't know how to ex best explain it. And, you know, and this is probably the first, like I said, any drink I wasn't too crazy about, but I finished it because I figured, you know what, I spent... Um... Two forty nine on it plus tax, and the cigarettes cost like five something, almost six bucks. So, and I'm spending like nine dollars to get like a, a couple cents back in change. So, I think you know you spent the money on it, might as well drink the damn thing. So, but I think I'd save a little bit for when I got home. Uh, yeah, yeah, this. Smells it smells all right, but the taste is just it's weird. Okay, you're thinking, wow, it's the first time I've ever seen King Cobra and I get excited about an energy drink like it's the best fucking thing in the world. Oh my god. So I don't know, but I don't know if it's a new flavor they're, they're trying yeah. out or what. But um, overall, I'd probably get about a three out of five. Um, uh, the caffeine kicks not that 
big. I can kind of feel it and kind of notch. It's kind of a milder. Um, the taste is what really threw it off for me personally. Um, so, would I buy this again? No, if it was an, if it was an energy drink they had available, I was craving that caffeine kick from energy drink. Then yeah, I would buy it again. But if I had other options, you know, I'd probably buy a different one. So that's my review on the um, Rockstar Bubbleberry Super Sours. Um, so yeah, the taste, like I said, is weird for me. I don't know what to make of it. But it's not half bad, it's not half good either. It's just kind of, like I said, three out of five. Um, so it's, yeah. You may like it though, so it might be a new flavor. Check it out and see what you guys think. Hmm. Yeah, that's our gun we get from that's like comes in the colorful bubble bubble wrapping paper. You know what you get at Halloween when you, know, you unwrap it? It's all the crazy colors like the green and the red. And it's got little waves in it, like little, you know, waves in it all going around. It's like, it's just like that, that kind of gum, basically. At the point, like I said, where, yeah, I'm just repeating myself. It's kind of got that taste with it, too. So it's a really weird taste. Um, because before that, like two hours before I decided, two or three hours before I was decided to go to the, um, a uh, convenience store with a cup of coffee, so as I am a little cold, why not make myself a cup of coffee? As I was walking to the convenience store, I noticed that one of the banks that was closed down there, one of those digital clocks, you know, it was said it was 12 degrees outside. I'm like, oh, no wonder it's so freaking cold out, so, yeah. But, Cup of warm coffee. There we go. Or hot coffee, actually. Hmm. Now, ironically enough, this is the front back of the cup. Now you're probably laughing to see the front of the cup. Thinking, oh, it's a little snowman. It's so cute. It's you fucking pose your mother. <laughs> Look at her taking out the snowman cup. Oh my god, it's funny. It's just a cup, man. Who the fuck cares what's on it, man? I think a snowman's a lot better than having like a Justin Bieber mug, which would kind of, you know, be really sad if I was drinking out of a mug like that. Fuck that shit, man. I think a snowman's way cooler. So, yeah. <laughs> no, but um, my real mom gave me this cup when I was a little kid, and I don't know. You know, because that's the weird thing, just when we were packing up and moving to this apartment, it was in a box of cups, and I'm like, really? And my dad's like, well, it's a cup. And I'm like, oh. you know, and I figured, you know what? It's a cup. Like, I got some drink hot 
coffee out of them, so I figured, you know what, who the fuck cares what it looks like? Just be grateful. So, and uh, it was a cup, like I said, my uh, rebel engaging when I was a little kid, who I've not seen in a number of years, and every time I tried to contact her, you know, my dad would try to get a hold of her parents and go, hey, where's Laura at? You know, maybe we go if she could see Josh again, da 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 da, whatever. And my grandma's parents are telling my dad he needs to go to church or repent for his sins or he'll go to hell or some stupid shit like that. So basically, my biological grandparents are extremist Christians, Catholic types, you know. So, you know, so yeah, you can kind of see, right, my sort of deep seated hatred for the super annoying Jesus freaks. Now, does, does that mean I have a problem with the, the people worshiping Jesus? No. Not at all. If you worship Jesus, good for you, you know. I'm just talking about the assholes that fucking throw it in your face and act like they're all fucking mighty as all hell because they worship Jesus Christ, you know what I'm saying? Those are the people I can't stand. The people that think just, just because they're, they worship Jesus, they think that they have the right to just shove it in everyone's face and it's because they tolerate it. Um, which I think is kind of hypocritical considering one of the Ten Commandments is love thy neighbor and then they turn around and go, have you accepted Jesus Christ into your life? Now, this is a test. They can tell a Jesus freak from a do-good or Christian which is just trying to live their life. Do-gooders, you know, okay, what happens? They say, let's just have a hypothetical, if you will. Let's say if I'm walking down the street and some guy comes up to me with the Bible and says, can I have a moment of your time? I'm like, yeah, what do you want to talk about? He goes, I'll talk to you about Jesus Christ. I'm like, uh, I'd be like, uh, here we go again. And I'm like, um, I'm actually don't believe in God or any of that crap, so I got my own religious beliefs. Oh, well, peace be with you then. But that's one thing. If you can respect my beliefs, I'll respect yours. You know what I'm saying? But the people who throw it in my face are going like, to. <clears throat> You know what, I just, <laughs> um, I, need, I need to get a credit card or something like that, because I noticed that um, my all-time favorite band, Cradle of Filth, actually has a website, you know, and then I had a, it's, it's web, one of the websites I have a profile on, which I haven't used in a long time, but I noticed they had a link to the webpage, which allowed you to go to, um, Oh, I was like to purchase merchandise, one of which is the infamous Jesus is a Cunt t-shirt. You can get it in a sweatshirt, too, and a long sleeve shirt, so. <laughs> um, um, so I might, get, I might get something like that, you know. But ironically enough, if I did get something like that, I couldn't wear it outside of the apartment. Well, yes, I could because it's freedom of speech. See, if the cop pulls me on and says, you need to take off that shirt, sir, and it's offensive, I'm like, yeah, and it's my right as an American to just express my freedom of speech. It's just really nasty, tongue-in-cheek, that's all it is. It's not, well, you see, I don't know, people walking around might be Catholic or Christian, and it might be offensive to them. I'm like, so fucking what? They walk around and shove their beliefs in my face all the fucking time, so how is this any different? They're kind of being hypocritical, they get pissed off about it. Cop goes, well, all Christians are Catholics like that. I'm like, yeah, I'm not a Satanist, so... Well, you sweet jail that. I'm like, no, dude, look, you're just gonna profile me. That's profiling, dude. It's like straight up. You know what I'm saying? You don't know me. You don't know where I come from. So, wait. Just take off the damn shirt. I'm like, I'm pretty sure no one wants to see my hairy fucking chest. Just so, then I probably get decent exposure. So, yeah, I think I'm keeping the shirt on. Bye now. Watch him give me a fucking ticket for it, too. I laugh like I got a ticket for it. I take the judge. I'm like, hold on a second. I got, you know what I'm saying, I'd be fighting that shit. I'm like, dude, this is America. This is freedom of speech. We're talking here. Yes, but as we're touching the back, so it's offensive. And you're, 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 I'm like, yeah, and I didn't think it was offensive. But personally, I think being offensive is just, you know, for me personally, it's not really that big a deal. Considering it could be worse. You, 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 you throw that into consideration. Um, now, had I gone to some some random cemetery and, and just bare assed on a gravestone taking a ship in someone's someone's grave, then yeah, that would have been a lot worse. Than say wearing an, a mildly offensive t shirt with some vulgarity on it. You did what I'm saying? 
and vulgarity personally doesn't offend me because I'm, I think, well, you know, they're just words, you know, people take so much offense to it because, you know, they're brought up in older generation. Thing is, I wouldn't be stupid enough to wear that to my grandparents' house because now both sets of grandparents that I know that I don't know this over the years, my step almost my grandparents are churchgoers and now my dad's parents are churchgoers, which they didn't used to be. But if you grew up in, in my channel, you know this. And even more weird is that they got a little fucking yapper chihuahua type dog. It's just, hey, you know. And you know what the weird thing is? My granddad, growing up as a kid, you know, the neighbors had dogs start barking. He'd just be like, all oh, the damn dogs are always barking their heads off. And I don't know, just go on. She hates dogs. And then out of the fucking nowhere, he gets a little dog. Let's just sit in his lap and shit. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm hearing this shit going, huh? Which didn't surprise me as, as much as them just find that they both go to church. And I'm like, okay, out of the blue, they start going to church. What could have sparked that? And you know what? Um, I got no problems with people who go to church. I really don't. But you start shoving it in my face, you know, it's just that you're right because of it. Then you run out of problems. <laughs> um, you know how many times I've heard people say this, Josh, you need Jesus in your life. Or have you heard the good Lord? I'm like, oh my fucking. I'm like, you know what? Quit trying to sell me your religion like it's a fucking used car because I don't want to fucking deal with it, all right? How about that? Is that blunt enough for you? You know, some people, they just, they want to do good, and I can understand that, but do us a favor. I think, me especially, speaking for a lot of people, it's the last thing you want to deal with when you're on a busy work day or coming home from a day of, from a day of hard work is to hear someone preach to you about God. You're thinking, look, dude, no. Only the freaking Jehovah's Witnesses show up to my apartment. I'm going to be wearing my Jesus is a cunt t-shirt. I'm just going to say, Look at the back of my shirt, now fuck off. And you'll be like, you know, look at the front of my shirt, and look at the back. Now you're thinking, it's just, no, it's just, it's very dark, tongue in cheek. You know, it's got a naked knot on the front, she's fingering herself, and it says, wrist of masturbation on the back, it says, Jesus is a cunt. Okay, now it's very dark, tongue in cheek, yes. My first thought was like, what? But then, I didn't make the connection until I watched your cradle field interview and Danny Phillips actually explained it. I'm like, oh, okay. Wow, I said what's up what's it go over the the shock factor of it and I actually realized it was actually quite funny. In fact, be funny itself I went up to the Vatican right in front of the Pope, just one giant F you to the Pope. He's like up oh, away he resigned. Hmm, I wonder why. They caught him in the altars with the boy. Oh, they did? Yeah, the sinful confession box. Which one? Oh, that was horrible. God. Ugh. <laughs> <coughs> well, it seems like a couple of pastors or priests get caught molesting little boys, and also there's jokes on all over the place, right? I mean, you're in the house of God, and you're fucking little boys in, this, in the confession box. Some little boy comes in. Forgive me, Father, I have sinned. Pastor's going, oh yeah, here we go. <clears throat> you want some candy? It's holy hard candy. <laughs> oh, you're thinking, that's horrible. Yeah, I know it is. <sighs> you're thinking, that's just fucking horrible. Yeah, it is horrible, but it's going to be kind of funny if you think about it. Not really, just kind of... I think I shaved like two days ago and it's already gone back a considerable amount. <coughs> and part of working where I work, I keep clean shaven and all that. They don't care if you have a mustache, but if you have like, you know, goatee and neck and sideburns up, you know, you can't keep them. But like, sideburns can be no lower than the earlobe. Anything past that is considered a safety hazard, so, you know. So I'll, yeah, be sure to shave before I go to work, which isn't going to take much because I got like one of those buzzers just go, you know what I'm saying? So I might want to charge up so that way I can just shave when I have to, so. But.
Well, part of the reason why I have such a negative outlook on religion as far as Jesus goes and all that is because my real mom, my psychotic real mother, was a churchgoer and a Jesus freak and raised in a very strict, very crazy Catholic family or Christian, you know what I'm saying, that, that type of mentality, you know, and it's unfortunate that, you know, she grew up in that. That's not my fucking problem, though, so. Now, every time, like I said, every time my, uh, you know, my dad would call my biological mother's parents, just ask where she was at, so she could, so he could, so my dad could try to get a hold of her to contact me or whatever, because my dad feels, you know, like, this one times where he's felt like, Josh, you need to talk to Laura. I'm like, no, I don't. I fucking hate her. Why should I fucking talk? You know, well, she gave birth to you. Yes, she should have aborted my ass. I would have saved the world a huge favor. Seeing my ugly ass on YouTube. But then if it, she did, she, but if she would have aborted me, I wouldn't be here on YouTube bitching about it today. Oh, and the irony. I have to wonder what life would have been like without Josh Saunders. The world can see me as... I am now. I wonder what use I have for this world, if not to piss them off or make them laugh, or a little bit of both. You see, if I'm pissing off that much, then why the fuck you watching my shit on YouTube? That's just it. Unfortunately, YouTube's kind of become this thing where people just troll each other constantly and make fun of each other and stupid shit like that, you know? And some of it's meant to be in good fun, some of it's just spite spiteful, and some of it's just crosses the line, you know, and it's just ridiculous when it crosses the line. The comments are one thing, man, but you start getting into the really nasty, you know, two-faced bullshit, and then you're sitting there going, wow, what lengths people will go to troll people on, on the internet, and it's just sad. Um, and part of the reason why I get so troll paranoid on YouTube is because growing up, I was picked on a lot in school and teased and harassed by bullies, and, uh, I had a little bit of it myself growing up too, so I was kind of on both sides of the street if that makes any sense as far as the bullying issue goes. So, you know, what's ironic as fuck is my teacher, you know, her teacher comes with me and my dad and my teacher, she's just sitting there crying, I can't believe you pick on someone so when you're supposed to be your friend. I'm like, yeah, no, fuck off. This kid I picked on, overly cheery, is really fucking obnoxious. And you're thinking, Oh my god, is he being a hypocrite again? God damn it, no, but here's the thing. In case you understand the thing. Some people are just way too goddamn cheery. I mean, to the point where, are they on drugs or what the fuck, you know? It's, Hi, how's it going? And it's really hyper, really irritating as all hell, you know what I'm saying? So you, you try to say, hey, look, could you please not bother me, man? You try to be calm with them, but they won't fucking listen to you. So being mean to them, then they're still there, and they're still there, and they're fucking laugh. Like, it doesn't affect them. Like, dude, you're just, you're fucking retarded, dude. Whatever. Well, that's cool. He's like, oh my fucking. I mean, if you're gonna laugh at yourself is one thing, but to be as blatantly stupid about it as you possibly can, and then not realize you're doing it, but don't you do that all the time on YouTube? Yes, but I know I'm doing it. I'm doing it on purpose to fuck with trolls and laugh at myself. There's a difference. Um, when you're doing it, you know, because just... Ah, fuck. It's hard to explain. You have to have been there to know this, this, this guy, and... Um, I mean, we were complete, complete opposites. Um, he was really cheery all the fucking time. Just really... To the point of where you wanted to fucking strangle over the kid because he was that fucking annoying with it. And me, I was more on the opposite spectrum, really depressed all the time. It's part of having my Asperger's. So I cope with it the best way I can. Good coffee, cigarettes, alcohol, tobacco. Hmm. I didn't have much caffeine yesterday because of a cup of coffee. It's probably going to take a cup of coffee. Well, I'm not upset with that roster, are we? Oh, yeah. I can feel the caffeine just whoosh, course through my body and it's fucking awesome. Hmm. I wonder if we have my mom more, more. I've been told she drank coffee. I'm like, hmm. I probably heard my love of coffee from my real mom. Hmm. Thanks, mom. <laughs> uh, that's irony right there. But uh, let's see. Okay, these are camel torture lists. These are some 
damn good cigarettes. The only problem is they come in a paper pack, which is a, kind of a pain in the ass to deal with. So you unwrap it. Okay. I get these things open with a pain in the ass too. You, what you want to do here with these paper packs, every kind is, um, you know, take one of those signs and just kind of um, open it up here. You don't want to peel too much off here because then it just makes it a pain in the ass to deal with later. But you don't leave about that much open, open like that. That's all you want to do. And once you get the first cigarette out, the rest will come out easy. But the first cigarette to get out of these packs is a pain in the ass. You know, you're gonna kind of shake it like that, but anyway, you're sitting there, you're not trying to get the. So what you want to do is you can take. Which we see, and um, try to grab a hold of it with your thumb and your finger, and just kind of dig in there and pull it out. <sighs> yeah, these um, paper packs are a pain in the ass to deal with, but as long as you get a really good cigarette, so. So you know you just go to the one on the front end. Once you get like that, there you go. Sweet. And then once you get that first round, the rest of them get out, getting out a lot easier. So and that's basically it. Just a can camel for choice. So doesn't really matter which end you smoke it out, but if you smoke the label out first, it's called assassin style. No, assassin style. I'm thinking what? Now, if you're a sniper in the military who smokes and you're working on a mission, a smoke an assassin style, if you have to drop your cigarette, I can be able to tell what, what kind it is because the label's been smoked off. That's why it's called assassin style, so. Yeah. But. I just got tired of smoking reds. I don't know. It's just I had a red one day and it was just a happy end. The aftertaste was just like, oh, what is this, man? It's just kind of weird tasting. So I switched to these, I guess. I don't know. Oop. Twice in one night. Awesome. <laughs> there we go. Gently. There we go. But yeah, it's like I said, you know. Now, ironically enough, my dad has had bad experiences with 
experiences with the church too, as far as just you know some of the churches my dad's gone to that uh, were a bit they were kind of you know what I'm saying they were like really extreme about their views and very in your face about it and you know and don't get me wrong going to church can be a very positive experience for spiritual guidance but some of us have other ways of finding spiritual guidance personally that's how I see religion as really spiritual guidance you know some of you may find spiritual guidance in Jesus that's fine but don't expect the rest of the world to think like that because you do because that's just complete ignorance Flavor of these is actually very strong, very bold, very rich, very robust flavor. I mean, it seems they're a bit harsher than your average cigarette because there's no filter on them, so you sell them. Ironically enough, my granddad and my grandma dad used to smoke. My granddad quit before my grandma did. And one day, my grandma comes to visit us, and my grandma granddad did. My grandma's out on the porch smoking a cigarette, and I was like 12 or 13. I'm like, Grandma, I want you to quit smoking for me, please. I don't want you to die. And my grandma quit smoking for me. And then look at me. Disgusting hypocrisy of it all. <laughs> so, yeah, I can see the. Of course, growing up when I was a kid, I go over to my grandparents and they were smoking their cigarettes, you know, and so I kind of grew up with the smoke of tobacco. As my dad, because, you know, my dad's parents are basically, you know, so, yeah, my dad hates to smoke cigarettes, just can't stand it, man. Just, ugh, the faces he makes when he smokes tobacco, like, oh, what, you know? So some people hate it, but it's not the worst habit out there for you, so. Like when these, um, fat asses get on smoking it's like dude you're chowing down on a, big, on a big mac at mcdonald's i'm smoking a cigarette while you fuck off with hypocrisy like excuse me i'm like well pick your poison man you're probably gonna get diabetes from eating that shit i'm gonna get lung cancer I'm smoking these things so yeah <laughs> i'll still get my 15 pleasures and i have to with yours to each his or her own Cigarettes. Yeah, if I get tired of smoking these, just because it's. Um, you seem to be so freaking strong, though. It's just like, holy shit. So, I'll probably switch this up. We'll switch to a more milder cigarette just because, you know, these things will kill you faster than anything, but. So damn good though. <laughs> so damn good. But and to be honest with you, I really don't feel like trying to reconnect with my real mom. To be honest with you, I've tried in the past and it's been a complete failure. I'm trying to find her and catch up. And uh, last time I saw my real mom was uh, I was like twelve or thirteen years old when. To a mall, we went to the mall and had lunch at this little pizza restaurant and um, barely talked. We were like, we were like strangers basically, and I was like, dude, this is bullshit, <laughs> you know. So, and, and um, from what I've heard, she's managed to remarry. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I could have half brothers and sisters out there. I know I already have a half sister. I have like two of them that I know of. Or three actually. Um, so my New little sisters that I'm, my mom and dad have, you know, that I've lived with for a number of years, and then there's the other half sister that I haven't seen in quite some time. I hope she's doing all right, but you know, uh, uh, 
I just think that if I become a famous musician and lo and behold, you know, I'm in my dream and I was kicking in and all of a sudden I hear a knock on the door. I'm like, who the hell is this? Hey, Josh, I'm coming for the you. It's, it's your mom, Laura. Oh, now you're going to contact me after all these years. Now that I'm making some money, what the fuck do you want? I just want to reconnect with bullshit. If you wanted to try to reconnect with me as your son, you would have tried a lot harder when I wasn't making it big. So, as it coming to that, then I'm going to just be like, there's there's a highway, just go. Just go. Just. Um, so, yeah, it's made Christmas time really depressing because of those issues, but last Christmas, what we just had wasn't too bad, actually. It was actually nice and pleasant. It wasn't depressing at all. So, yeah. Um, much of that was effort on my part not to be so depressed around Christmas time because I knew I'd be spending it with my family. And the past couple of Christmases I've had weren't exactly pleasant because my parents, you know, were having me take medication to deal with my depression. And personally, I don't believe in medication, the drug companies and all that shit. My parents were like, if you're going to be depressed, you're just going to do your so, And I was, I refuse to take my medication because I'm like, dude, I don't need medication. Fuck that shit. I don't like the way it makes me feel or anything like that. And unfortunately, you know, when I'm go when I went out without it for so long, I started to get real cranky and just nasty, horrible shit, you know. So there's been times where my parents have literally almost called the cops on me because of my random mood swings. So, yeah. And the way I see it, um, cigarettes, you know, coffee, caffeine, alcohol, tobacco, my music, YouTube, you know, it's, these are my um, stress relievers in life. They help me deal with life when I'm feeling depressed. So, I don't need medication. I got my own way to deal with my depression, if that makes any sense. But, oh yeah, it's nice. <laughs> like, what the fuck was that? That was a fart. That was a fart. So that was quite a nice fart. Ah, oh, that was weak. Excuse me. Like farting on YouTube, Josh. Really? Ugh. So what? I fart on YouTube. They fucking whoop. You know. Some people make a bigger stink about the fart than the person farted, and it's kind of amusing actually. When people flip out about it. So it's like, what the fuck? You know. So. Yeah. Anyway, this is a uh, King Cobra JFS, another random video, and uh, thank you all for watching. See you guys later.